Hi, I'm Andy, the Palm Springs linguist. Today I'm going to explore Disneyland, California and explore the topic of jargon. In this video, I will define jargon and then take a deep dive into jargon used to discuss Walt Disney World and Disneyland. Jargon is specialized language used for a particular activity or by a particular group of people. The purpose of jargon is to allow a specific group of people to discuss a specific topic with precision and efficiency. The downside and occasionally the benefit of jargon is that conversations using jargon are difficult for outsiders to understand. Jargon is definitely insider language. Every profession, every field of study, and every hobby has its own jargon. Let's take a look at Disney theme park jargon. I worked at Disneyland for 10 years in the late 1980s and early 1990s. I started off in outdoor vending selling popcorn, balloons, and churros and then transferred to attractions where I worked on 16 different attractions, including being on the opening cruise of both Splash Mountain and Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye. My favorite attractions to work were Space Mountain and Pirates of the Caribbean. This is me grouping on pirates in the early 1990s before I became the Palm Springs linguist. Still to this day, I often find myself in social situations with other current and former Disney cast members talking about Disneyland using Disney jargon. Sometimes we will have a friend or spouse with a group who never worked at Disneyland and invariably that person will get quickly lost in the conversation, not understanding or misunderstanding what we're saying. That is the nature of jargon. It allows efficient communication for insiders, but quickly becomes incomprehensible to outsiders. If you've ever asked someone, what did you just say in plain English? Then you likely just heard jargon. I'm going to take a deep dive into Walt Disney World and Disneyland jargon, but please know that not all of these examples of Disney jargon are current. Also, jargon by nature is used by a specific group of people. While many of these examples will be jargon that is used all across Disneyland and Walt Disney World, some of the examples used will be specific to a certain an aspect of Disney theme parks and only used by specific groups of Disney fans or employees. The park. Even when completely out of context, whenever I hear a West Coaster with a Disney background say the park, I know they mean Disneyland. Guests. Customers at Disney theme parks are called guests. This terminology frames the way they should be treated. Cast member. Walt Disney World and Disneyland employees are trained that they are putting on a show, so employees are called cast members, never employees. Costume. Since employees are cast members, they don't wear a uniform. They wear a costume. If I worked on Haunted Mansion today, but tomorrow I work on Space Mountain, I'm going to have to exchange my costume at wardrobe. On stage. All the areas of the park where guests can visit and see are considered on stage. Cast members try to be friendly and smile whenever they are on stage. Backstage. Backstage is the opposite. Anywhere at the park where guests are not allowed to go is considered to be backstage. Cast members wait until they are backstage to eat. Bad show. Bad show describes a situation when a guest is able to see something that detracts from the theming or the atmosphere of the park. Examples of bad show are Snow White smoking a cigarette on stage, an overflowing trash can, or a cast member dressed in a Haunted Mansion costume talking to a fellow cast member in Space Mountain in Tomorrowland while they are operating the attraction. Good show. Good show describes a situation when a guest is able to see something that adds to or blends in with the theming or the atmosphere of the park. Examples of good show are Mickey Mouse dressed in an astronaut's outfit, greeting guests in Tomorrowland and trash cans that are empty and themed to each area. Disney bounding. Disney bounding is using a character as inspiration for the way you dress, but not trying to look exactly like the character. A guest wearing a polka dot dress reminiscent of Minnie Mouse's is an example of Disney bounding. Nobody is going to mistake her for the real Minnie Mouse, but certainly Disney fans will recognize that her outfit is paying homage to Minnie. West Side. West Side is the west half of the park, including Adventureland, Frontierland, New Orleans Square, and Bear Country, which was later renamed to Critter Country. East Side. East Side is the east half of the park, including Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. Center Stage. Center Stage at Disneyland is Main Street USA and the parking lot. Attraction. Walt Disney World and Disneyland don't call their rides rides. All of their shows and rides are called attractions. How many rides does Disneyland have? Just one, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, since it has the word ride in its name. 
AA figure. AA figure is short for an audio animatronic figure, which are the three-dimensional animated figures. These are the robot-like figures found in attractions like Pirates of the Caribbean or Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. The first attraction using AA figures was the Enchanted Tiki Room, which opened in 1963. Round Ride. A round ride is an attraction that just goes in a circle, such as Dumbo's Flying Elephants, Mad Tea Party, King Arthur's Carousel, and Rocket Jets. Dark Ride. A dark ride is generally an indoor, slow-moving ride, often with audio animatronic figures. Examples of dark rides include Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin, and Peter Pan's Flight. To Rope Drop. If you rope drop, you get to the park at opening. The opening of the park is called Rope Drop because often guests are allowed early on the Main Street before park opening. To keep guests on Main Street, they put up a rope to block you from going into the rest of the park. When they drop the rope, then the park is officially open. Park opening is still called rope drop even when there is no rope involved. Hard ticket event. A hard ticket event is when the park closes down and then reopens requiring a separate ticket purchased specifically for the event. Oogie Boogie Bash, a Disney Halloween party, is an example. Another example of a hard ticket event is a private party. A private party is a hard ticket event for which tickets are sold through a specific company or organization. If a Magic Key Pass holder or or a cast member wants to attend a hard ticket event, they must purchase a separate ticket just like everyone else. Mix-in. A mix-in is when a private party starts before the regularly scheduled day ends. This creates a situation where the regular daytime guests can stay through the private party since the park never actually closed down for the party. For example, let's say the private party starts at 3 p.m., but the regularly scheduled day is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Since the private party overlaps with the regular day, the daytime guests can stay through the private party. As far as I know, this is a practice of the past. In all likelihood nowadays, if your hard ticket event starts before the end of the regularly scheduled day, you will be given a wristband, which you must show once the regularly scheduled day ends to show that you indeed have a ticket to the party. Imagineer. Imagineer is a portmanteau word combining the words imagination and engineer. Imagineers are the people who design the attractions for the park. Imagineer can also be used as a verb, such as America Sings was closed down to Imagineer a new attraction. Sign in. Cast members can sometimes get themselves and guests into the park for free. When they do this, they are signing into the park. Long ago are the days when you actually signed your name into a book to get into the park for free as a cast member. Nevertheless, cast members still refer to their entering the park for free as signing in. Blockout. A blockout day is a day when Magic Key Power holders and or cast members cannot sign into the park. If they want to go to the park that day, they have to pay for a ticket. ER. ER is an initialism that stands for early release. If you ER from your cast member shift, you get to leave work early. ADO. ADO is an initialism that stands for authorized day off. If you are granted an ADO, you get the entire day off. MALOA. MALOA is an acronym that stands for Medical Leave of Absence. While MALOA always sounded like a fun Hawaiian dance to me, what it really meant was that you're not going to work for multiple days for a medical reason. You're out on MALOA. Double back. If there are fewer than eight hours between your shifts, then you get paid double time until eight hours have elapsed. This is called double back. For example, if your shift ends at midnight and then tomorrow's shift starts at 7 a.m., then you will have one hour of double back. Code U. Code U indicates that someone urinated in an unexpected place. For example, if you're working on Splash Mountain and someone urinated in a log, you might tell your fellow cast member, let's pull off this log, there's a code U. Code V. A code V is similar to a code U, but instead of urine, the V stands for vomit. Sometimes when Star Tours was brand new, a guest couldn't handle the motion well and vomited into the Star Speeder. There's a code V in Cabin 2. Pixie Dust. As an attractions host, I never cleaned up a code V. We would call custodial, but before custodial arrived, we would sprinkle an absorbent material, which looked like sand, on the code V called pixie dust. I always thought the pixie dust smelled even worse than the code V. Nevertheless, the pixie dust would absorb the vomit and the custodian would then be able to clean it up more efficiently. 
Earning your ears. If a cast member is still new and doesn't know how to respond yet to all the given scenarios, that cast member is still earning their ears. Guest control. Crowd control in Disney is called guest control. These are the cast members that assist people to stand in the correct places for parades, shows, and fireworks. Let's talk about the Disney characters that greet you in the park. Face character. A face character is a character that walks around in the park that you can see the face of the actor. Snow White, Peter Pan, Belle, Aladdin, and Jasmine are examples of face characters. Head character. A head character is a character that walks around the park that wears a mask, and so you cannot see the face of the actor. Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Winnie the Pooh, and the genie from Aladdin are examples of head characters. I've also come across the term fuzzy character. Perhaps that is a more current term as I've never heard that term back in the 1980s or 1990s. Kevin's Party. Many cast member roles require that you not leave a certain position. For example, if you are working at a Disney Vacation Club kiosk, for the most part you're expected to stand at the kiosk. If you are authorized to be out of position, but you take much more time than you need before returning to your position, you've gone to Kevin's party. If you've gone to Kevin's party, you're milking your authorized time away from your position. Let's discuss jargon for the attractions. 101. If an attraction breaks down and has to close temporarily, the attraction has gone 101. 102. Once the attraction is repaired and reopens, it is no longer 101, it is then 102. To backdoor. If you backdoor someone onto an attraction, you let them skip the line and go on the attraction without waiting. You still call this process backdooring even if there is no backdoor to the attraction. Tower. The tower is a room where a cast member watches video screens of various parts of the attraction to supervise the guests on the attraction. The tower is sometimes also called the control tower. Grouper. The cast member who asks you how many in your party and then assigns you a row of the vehicle to get into is the grouper. A grouper groups guests onto a vehicle. Stager. Sometimes you may have two cast members working the group position. The person who asks you how many in your party and assigns you the row is the grouper. But the additional cast member who makes sure that you find the right row that you were assigned is the stager. The stager helps the grouper make sure that guests follow the directions of the grouper. To double group. If you double group, then you have two vehicle fulls of guests standing on their numbers waiting for the respective vehicles to arrive so that they can board the attraction. A grouper double groups to ensure that they have enough time to fill every seat. Rotation. A rotation is a system of moving cast members who work on an attraction around from position to position before they get their break. For example, a rotation on Pirates of the Caribbean with four positions and five people could go like this. Position one, reader. Position two, grouper. Position three, unload. Position four, Four, tower. Position five, go take a break. First you work at the entrance as a greeter. Then 15 minutes later a cast member replaces you and you go to the next position and group guests into boats for 15 minutes. Then that same cast member replaces you at group. You unload guests from boats for 15 minutes. Then that same cast member replaces you at unload. You go to the tower and monitor the video monitors for 15 minutes until that same cast member replaces you so that you can go on a 15 minute break. Once you're finished with your break, then you start the rotation all over again, back at the entrance as a greeter. Bump. When you work in a rotation, when a cast member replaces you so that you can move on to the next position, they bump you. They will tell you, it's a bump. Bump in. When you bump into a rotation, you start to work a position replacing someone so that they can move on to the next position in the rotation. Bump out. When you bump out of a rotation, someone takes over your position and you either go on a break or go home. Bump around. If you ask someone to bump around you, then you are working a position in a rotation and you ask the person who is supposed to take over your position to skip over you and go to the next position. You might want people to bump around you if you really like to work a specific position. Like me, I loved working group on Space Mountain or Pirates since I thought it was fun. Or you might ask people to bump around you because your shift is going to end soon. But it's not quitting time quite yet. Sometimes if someone was tired of standing or they were just lazy, they would ask you to bump around them in the tower so that they could sit down longer. My answer was usually, 
No way. Since as a cast member, you spend most of your time standing, it always felt good to be able to sit down for a few minutes in the tower. Double break. Most attractions had a cast member who managed the attraction during the shift called a lead. Often leads were not required to be part of the rotation. But if the lead bumped into the rotation, then rather than one person being on a break at a time, there would be two people on a break at a time until the lead bumped out. This made it so you got your breaks faster than usual. Cycling an attraction. If you cycle an attraction, you set the vehicles of the attraction in motion. They go round and round, but no guests are actually riding the attraction yet. Cycle out. If you cycle out an attraction, you stop letting guests get in line and you only allow the people in line to go on the attraction so that you can close it temporarily. If it is more urgent to close the attraction down, then you might stop loading guests onto the attraction right away and you keep cycling the attraction until everybody who's already in vehicles unloads. E-stop. E-stop is an abbreviation for emergency stop. When you press an e-stop, the attraction stops moving. You might press the e-stop in the case of an emergency or maybe it's the end of the day and you're powering down the attraction. Station stop. While an e-stop stops the entire attraction from moving, a station stop only stops the vehicles that are located where the guests are boarding or exiting the vehicles. The other vehicles in the attraction are still moving. If a guest tries to get into a vehicle after it starts to move, then you would hit a station stop. Walk the line in. When the park closes, one cast member will get in line for the attraction to ensure that no other guests get into line. This cast member will usually stay in line until the last guest boards the attraction. Deadhead. If you go on a deadhead, you drive a vehicle, such as a submarine or a monorail, on its track with no guests aboard your vehicle. Riad. Riad is an abbreviation for readmission ticket. Sometimes when a ride broke down, cast members would hand out Riads to guests so that they could come back later without waiting in line. They would just have to show their ticket. Route 1. In Fantasyland, certain attractions used to be grouped together into a single rotation. Route 1 was Snow White's Scary Adventures, Pinocchio's Daring Journey, and Casey Jr.'s Circus Train. Route 2. Route 2 was the rotation of Dumbo's Flying Elephants, Mad Tea Party, and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Route 3. Route 3 was the rotation of King Arthur's Carousel, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, and Peter Pan's Flight. Now let's talk jargon for Operating Space Mountain one of my favorite attractions. Backing up. If you do not advance the rockets out of the station in a timely manner, more rockets will come into the station, eventually filling up all the holding spots for the rockets in the station. An alarm will go off, alerting the cast members that they must advance the rockets as soon as possible. Otherwise, the next rocket in the mountain will have no spot in the station to go to, and the attraction will turn on all of the brakes, and the attraction will break down. To sandbag a rocket, Rockets travel through Space Mountain faster the heavier they are. A rocket loaded with 12 big guys is going to travel faster than a rocket with 5 small kids. The cast member working in the tower monitors the weights of the rockets. If the difference in weight between two consecutive rockets is greater than a specific amount, the cast member in the tower would press a button which made the rocket wait an extra five seconds in the station before being dispatched into the mountain so that there was plenty of space between traveling rockets since the heavier rocket would travel a little faster than the lighter rocket. Pressing this button is called sandbagging a rocket. Despite the term, there are no physical sandbags involved in sandbagging a rocket. It's just pressing a button. Heavy. When you are grouping and you have too many people on a specific row, you are heavy on that number. For example, heavy on six means that row six has an extra person or two that won't fit into the same vehicle as the rest of the people. Light. Light is the opposite of heavy. So if you are light on six, that means that the grouper needs to find someone to sit in row six because otherwise it will go empty. Goes. If you tell another cast member that a specific row goes, it means that these guests have been grouped together to sit in the same vehicle. For example, three goes means that the two people who are waiting for row three are slated to ride together. Block. Block is the opposite of goes. If you say block three, then that means that the two people who are waiting for row three are supposed to ride separately on different rockets. In all likelihood, they're strangers. Honestly, even though this feels like a deep dive, in reality, this is just scratching the surface. Disney theme parks, like any hobby, industry, or profession, has many terms of jargon. Now I want to hear from you, past and present Disney cast members. What jargon did I miss? To everyone else, 
What jargon do you use in your job? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Discover language you were never taught in school while exploring the California desert and beyond. If you enjoyed this episode, please click like and subscribe right now to not miss any future episodes of the Palm Springs Linguist. I hope you enjoyed Disneyland California as much as I did and that you gained some insight into jargon. I'm Andy, the Palm Springs Linguist. Until next time, I'm off to the pool.